Welcome back guys. It's still winter right now, but spring will be quickly approaching and with melting snow means the potential for flooding. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a water sensing pump controller for a general utility pump. And this way you can leave your pump unmonitored and it will start up in the presence of water and it will shut back down when the water level has been sufficiently decreased. So let's get started. And so the first thing we're gonna go over here are the components that we need to build our control circuit. In the top left hand corner, we have a voltage regulator that's gonna take our 120 volt AC power from our extension cord to down to five volt DC power to power our sensors. Down here, we have a sacrificial extension cord. Just got this thing at the dollar store. It's only a couple feet long, and we're gonna be cutting that up. On the right-hand side, also from the dollar store, we got some Velcro strips. Up here, we have the project case that we're gonna to use to mount and uh, house all of our sensors and electronic components. It's not waterproof, but if you can find a waterproof one, that would probably be the best. Over on the right-hand side here, we have a single channel relay board. So this can take five volt DC power and control 120 volt AC power. Over on the left, center left here, we have two water sensors. Now for this project, technically you may only need one and we're gonna go over some of the options we have for controlling our pump, but I'm gonna be using two for my control board. And in the center here, we have a little Arduino. This is an Arduino Micro. It's actually uh, still attached to an old project. I'm gonna be uh, salvaging it from this old project, desoldering it and reusing it for this project. So in this case, I will be using two sensors and the one on the right hand side here, the higher one, will be acting as my on sensor. And so as the water level rises, if it hits this sensor, the pump will turn on. And as the pump pumps water out of the area that we're interested in, once it passes below the level of the second sensor, then the pump will turn off. So we have this distance here that is going to be the amount of water that is gonna be pumped out of the area. And so if you're looking at a very large surface area, then the pump might take a while to pump all that water out. And you may want to bring these sensors a little bit closer together so that you don't have the opportunity for water to sit and pool in this particular area for too long. And of course, if the uh, area is very small, you can move these apart a little bit so it gives the chance, the pump a chance to prime itself and then actually run for a certain period of time rather than just turning on and off very quickly. And so right now, like I said, I have these two set at a depth of one inch apart and we can adjust this a little bit later. And we can also do things in our Arduino code to account for um, this difference in time. We can set delays in the pump to run for a minimum period of time, etc. So this is my setup and I've set, I've put one water uh, sensor into the, each of the bosses on my uh, project case here. And conveniently, the bosses are set at one inch apart. So with the position of the water sensors now sorted out, you can see here that I've mounted my Arduino and I've mounted the relay inside the enclosure and I've kept enough room to work around with my soldering iron for the next step, which is to of course wire this thing up. And you can see that I've also added a bit of hot glue to the bottom of the water sensors here, just to support them and keep them from wobbling around since they stick out of the enclosure so far. So now we can move on, like I said, to wiring up each of the sensors and supplying them with the five volt power that they need. So at this first stage of the wiring, all that's been done is running power and ground to each of the components. And those pins are very clearly marked on each of the devices. So on the water sensors, on the Arduino, and of course on the relay, you'll see positive and negative for each one. And so I've taken my five volt incoming power from my power adapter here, and I've split it off into red wire for positive, purple for negative. And like I said, I've supplied it to each of the components, soldering uh, each one to the connectors. And next up after the power and ground have been run, you can see the orange wires that I've added for the signal wires. And so on the water sensors, they are marked by pin S, which I'm assuming stands for signal. And I've run those to pins 10 and 11 on the Arduino. And on the relay, you can see here, there's another orange wire coming in and that's running to the pin marked in. And so this is gonna be the signal off of pin 12 on the Arduino into the relay to activate it. And of course, activate our pump. Now you can, if you have a different Arduino, of course, pick any other digital input output pin, 
to run your signal wires. So for the final part of the wiring, we're going to be cutting into our sacrificial extension cord. I came across this inline switch that I think nicely illustrates what we're trying to achieve. And so you can see one end being the receptacle and the other end being the plug, just as you'd have on a regular extension cord. And everything in between those will be represented by the wires on the extension cord. So what we're trying to do is tap into one of those wires and switch it on and off with the relay in our control box. So this cord already has one of the wires tapped and you can see that it goes into a simple inline switch. And this switch represents the relay in our control box. And therefore I can simply cut this switch out and wire it directly into my relay. And so this is the same result as if I took the regular extension cord and tapped into one of the live or neutral wires and then ran those into the relay. So one end of the tap wire should be connected to the comm terminal in there. It might be a little bit hard to see. And the other end is connected to the NO terminal, which stands for normally open. So that means the circuit is normally off. So you may also notice that this cord that I have here is a two prong plug and not a three prong plug. So I would recommend that you find a three prong extension cord to cut into so you don't lose the added safety of the third ground prong especially since this is going to be in service around water. So also please use common sense and when you cut into your extension cord, make sure it's not actually plugged into any wall receptacle. And if you can't understand why, then you probably shouldn't be attempting this in the first place. So after modifying the extension cord, we have also completed the coding for the microcontroller and you can find that Arduino code in the description down below. But for the sake of keeping this video short, I'm not going to go over the code, but I will show you how it works. And so as I mentioned earlier in this video, the controller is testing for the condition where the higher of the two water sensors is tripped. And in that case, it should turn the pump on and you should see the green LED on the relay turn on once the higher water sensor is submerged in water. And so you can see it successfully turned itself on. And so when the water level reaches that height, the pump will turn on and to simulate the water level dropping, you can see that I'll just keep it out of the water. And as soon as the lower sensor is removed from the water, the pump has turned itself off. And so right now this is working as we would expect. And we now have to mount this to the pump housing to of course uh, put it at the right height where the pump will not be taking in air and it's able to prime itself when the pump first turns on. So now with the whole thing together, you can see that I have the extension cord in place. And just as a reminder, one wire goes into the comm terminal, the other one goes into the normally open terminal. I also have the Velcro on the enclosure and I've used hot glue pretty liberally throughout the whole thing to seal everything up and keep water out. So things are looking ready to go. And now with the Velcro on here, I can put some Velcro on the pump and I'll show you that in a second. And we can mount this thing right to the pump. So now you can see the generic utility pump that I have here. So this is just a one sixth horsepower utility pump and it has the standard fitting on top for a garden hose. And so you can see here that I've applied the other half of the Velcro onto the side of this pump. And this is when we can mount our controller. Looking at it from the side, if we mount our controller with the bottom water sensor pretty much touching the ground, then this thing will run the water level down probably a little too low and the pump might draw in a bit of air. And so looking at it from this angle here, if I were to obviously put a, a ruler or something under, I'd probably leave about a quarter of an inch between the bottom sensor and the ground. And we can just stick that controller onto the side of the pump and it's in place. And like I said, looking at it from the side, there'd be about a one quarter inch gap between the bottom of this sensor and the ground level. So now the entire assembly is sitting here in front of us and you can see the control board mounted to the side. All of the wires have been zip tied up to the handle away from the ground where any sort of water might be sitting. Of course, right now I don't have the garden hose threaded in, but it would come out of here. The five volt adapter and our sacrificed extension cord have been plugged into the good extension cord, which you can see coming off the back here in blue. And of course that would get plugged into our receptacle and this thing is ready to go and test out outside. Okay, so I just wanna show you guys an example of the pump in action. So I'm in uh, the backyard where there's a low spot in the property and water collects. You can see on the bottom here that our water sensor is submerged 
And so as soon as I plug this in, the pump should kick on if everything is working properly. And so there you go. So now normally um, you would leave this outside and allow the water to cool to the point where it trips the sensor. Obviously right now I'm just giving you guys a demonstration. So the water level is already high enough to trip the sensor and you can hear that the pump is turned on. At the bottom here, our second sensor is obviously submerged as well since it's lower than the first sensor and uh, the pump will stay on and remain on until the water level is below this, uh, this lower sensor. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this video useful to prevent flooding in and around your home. Don't forget to check the video description down below for the Arduino code for the pump controller and I would really appreciate it if you guys hit the like button. See you guys in the next video.